Brought to you by wikivd.com Abdul Rashid Dostum Abdul Rashid Dostum is an Afghan politician who has served as Vice President of Afghanistan since 2014. He is an ethnic Uzbek former warlord and general, previously part of the Leadership Council of the National Front of Afghanistan along with Ahmad Zia Massoud and Mohammad Mohakik as well as chairman of his own political party, Junbashi Mili Yi Islami Yi Afghanistan. He also served in the past as chairman Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Afghan National Army, a role often viewed as ceremonial. During the Soviet war in Afghanistan, Dostum was a general in the Afghan army. He later became an independent warlord and leader of Afghanistan's Uzbek community. He participated in battles against the Mujahideen fighters in the 1980s as well as against the Taliban in the 1990s. After the fall of the Taliban he mainly resided in Turkey before returning to the country. In 2013 he made a public apology for his role in the civil war. He subsequently entered parliament, and later joined Ashraf Ghani's presidential administration as a vice president. Early life Dostum was born in 1954 in Khwaja Dukhojauzchen, province Afghanistan. Coming from an impoverished family he received a very basic traditional education as he was forced to drop out of school at a young age. From there he took up work in the gas fields. Careers Dostum began working in 1970 in a state-owned gas refinery in Shabergan, participating in union politics as the new government started to arm the staff of the workers in the oil and gas refineries. The reason for this was to create groups for the defense of the revolution because of the new communist ideas entering Afghanistan in the 1970s. He enlisted in the army in 1978. Dostum received his basic military training in Jalalabad. His squadron was deployed in the rural areas around Shabergan, under the auspices of the Ministry of National Security. Soviet War in Afghanistan by the mid-1980s he commanded around 20,000 militiamen and controlled the northern provinces of Afghanistan, while the unit recruited throughout Jauzjan and had a relatively broad base many of its early troops and commanders came from Dostum's home village. He left the army after the purge of Parch armies, but returned after the Soviet occupation began. During the Soviet war in Afghanistan, Dostum was commanding a militia battalion to fight and rout Mujahideen forces. He had been appointed an officer due to prior military experience. This eventually became a regiment, and later became incorporated into the defense forces as the 53rd Infantry Division. Dostum and his new division reported directly to President Muhammad Najibullah. Later on he became the commander of the military unit 374 in Jauzjan. He defended the Soviet-backed Afghan government against the Mujahideen forces throughout the 1980s. While he was only a regional commander he had largely raised his forces by himself. The Jauzjani militia Dostum controlled was one of the few in the country which was able to be deployed outside its own region. They were deployed in Kandahar in 1988, when Soviet forces were withdrawing from Afghanistan. Civil War Dostum's men would become an important force in the fall of Kabul in 1992. In April 1992, the opposition forces began their march to Kabul against the government of Najibullah. Dostum had allied himself with the opposition commanders Ahmad Shah Massoud and Syed Jafar Naderi, the head of the Ismaili community, and together they captured the capital city. He and Massoud fought in a coalition against Gulbuddin Hekmatyar. Massoud and Dostum's forces joined together to defend Kabul against Hekmatyar. 
with some 4,000, 5,000 of his troops units of his Schiburgen based 53rd Division and Bork based Guards Division garrisoning Balahisar Fort Moran Jan Hill and Quadra Wash International Airport. In 1994, Dostum allied himself with Gulbuddin Hekmatyar against the government of Burhanuddin Rabani and Ahmad Shah Massoud. Taliban and Northern Alliance Era Following the rise of the Taliban and their capture of Kabul, Dostum aligned himself with the Northern Alliance against the Taliban. He stationed his troops in the city of Mazari -e Sharif. The Northern Alliance was assembled in late 1996 by Dostum Massoud and Karim Khalili against the Taliban. At this point he is said to have had a force of some 50,000 men supported by both aircraft and tanks. He ruled what was, in effect, an independent region. He printed his own Afghan currency and ran a small airline named Bork Air. Much like other Northern Alliance leaders, Dostum also faced infighting within his group and was later forced to surrender his power to General Abdul Malik Palawin. Malik entered into secret negotiations with the Taliban, who promised to respect his authority over much of northern Afghanistan in exchange for the apprehension of Ismail Khan, one of their enemies. Accordingly, on 25 May 1997 Malik arrested Khan handed him over and let the Taliban enter Mazi-e Sharif, giving them control over most of northern Afghanistan. Because of this Dostum was forced to flee to Turkey. However Malik soon realized that the Taliban were not sincere with their promises as he saw his men being disarmed. He then rejoined the Northern Alliance and turned against his erstwhile allies driving them from Mazari -e Sharif. In October 1997, Dostum returned from exile and retook charge. After Dostum briefly regained control of Mazari -e Sharif, the Taliban returned in 1998, and he again fled to Turkey. Operation Enduring Freedom Dostum returned to Afghanistan in October 2001 to join the U.S.-led campaign against the Taliban, along with General Fahim Ismail Khan and Mohammad Mohakik. In November 2001, with the beginning of the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan and against the wishes of the CIA who distrusted Dostum, a team including Johnny Michael Spen landed to set up communications in the Dar -e Suf. A few hours later 23 men of Operational Detachment Alpha 595 landed to begin the war. On 24 November 2001, 300 Taliban soldiers retreated after the siege of Kunduz by American and Northern Alliance. The Taliban laid down their weapons a few miles from the city of Mazar-i Sharif. They eventually surrendered to Dostum. A small group of armed foreign fighters were transferred to the 19th century prison fortress, Qalai Jangi. The Taliban used concealed weapons to start the Battle of Qalai Jangi against the opposition forces. The uprising was eventually brought under control. Dashtai Lili Massacre in late 2001 Carlotta Gould, Jamie Doran and Newsweek began reporting rumors that Dostum's forces, who were fighting the Taliban alongside the U.S. Special Forces, intentionally suffocated as many as 2,000 Taliban prisoners in container trucks in an ill-defined incident that has become known as the Dash i Lili Massacre. In July 2009, the New York Times reported that according to anonymous witnesses they interviewed, over a three-day period, Taliban prisoners were stuffed into closed metal shipping containers and given no food or water, many suffocated while being trucked to the prison. Other prisoners were killed when guards shot into the containers. The bodies were said to have been buried in a mass grave in Dash Ilili, a stretch of desert just outside Shabergan. 
a 2002 declassified U.S. State Department intelligence report quoting a news source states that another anonymous source concluded that about 1,500 Taliban prisoners died. Estimates from other anonymous witnesses or from a report by Physicians for Human Rights range from several hundred to several thousand. The report also says that several Afghan witnesses were later tortured or killed. Dostum, the Red Cross and eyewitnesses in the prison claim that only 200 Taliban prisoners died from wounds or sickness. Physicians for Human Rights claims there is satellite evidence that graves had been dug up, but no investigation was done despite Dostum inviting the UN to investigate. No formal investigation was conducted, and an official website of General Dostum using eyewitnesses who go on the record lays out a timeline of events that debunk the allegations. The foundation of the controversy lay in confusion in estimating the number of Taliban that possibly joined the Northern Alliance or simply returned to their villages after the Kunduz surrender. According to the biography The Last Warlord, The Life and Times of General Dostum written by Professor Brian Williams, General Dostum has been the target of a number of sensational claims that were later debunked. Among them was the famous claim in Ahmed Rashid's book The Taliban that describes a tank was used to crush a thief. Ahmed Rashid corrects what turns out to be a second-hand story in Williams' book, and provides first-person description of events that directly contradict the rumors. Karzai administration In the aftermath of Taliban's removal from northern Afghanistan forces loyal to Dostum frequently clash with Tajik forces loyal to Atta Muhammad Nur. Atta's men kidnapped and killed a number of Dostum's men and constantly agitated to gain control of Mazi Sharif. Through the political mediations of the Karzai administration, the International Security Assistance Force and the United Nations, the Dostum Atta feud has gradually declined. Dostum served as Deputy Defense Minister the early period of the Karzai administration. In March 2003 he established a North Zone of Afghanistan. On 20 May 2003, Dostum narrowly escaped an assassination attempt. He was often residing outside Afghanistan, mainly in Turkey. On 16 August 2009 Dostum made a requested return from exile to Afghanistan to support President Hamid Karzai in his bid for re-election. He later flew by helicopter to his northern stronghold of Shabergan where he was greeted by thousands of his supporters in the local stadium. He subsequently made overtures to the United States promising he could destroy the Taliban and Al-Qaeda if supported by the U.S. saying that the U.S. needs strong friends like Dostum. Ghani administration Dostum became vice president of Afghanistan in the 2014 Afghan presidential election. His running mates were Ashraf Ghani and Sarwar Danish. In July 2016 Human Rights Watch accused Abdul Rashid Dostum's National Islamic Movement of Afghanistan of killing, abusing and looting civilians in the northern Faya province during June. Militia forces loyal to Dostum stated that the civilians they targeted at least 13 killed and 32 wounded were supporters of the Taliban. Time in Turkey Some media reports stated earlier that Dostum was seeking political asylum in Turkey while others said he was exiled. One Turkish media outlet said Dostum was visiting after flying there with then-Turkey's Foreign Minister Ali Babakan during a meeting of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe political and social views. While Dostum was ruling northern Afghanistan before the Taliban took over in 1998 women were able to go about unveiled girls were allowed to go to school and study. 
At the University of Bork in Mazai Sharif cinemas showed Indian films and music played on television activities which were all banned by the Taliban. He viewed the ISAF forces' attempt to crush the Taliban as ineffective and has gone on record saying that he could mop up the Taliban in six months if allowed to raise a 10,000-strong army of Afghan veterans. Senior Afghan government officials do not trust Ostam as they are concerned that he might be secretly rearming his forces. Dostum is currently barred from entering the U.S. because of his human rights record and of his involvement in the Dash i Lili massacre. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?